What's up guys, Justin here with the CGEssentials.com. So in this video, we're gonna learn how to use Smartify nodes in order to quickly mix materials inside a blender. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so you might've seen the first video I did on Smartify nodes, uh, it was either last week or the week before, talking kind of in general about what it can do. But Smartify nodes is basically a tool for creating smart materials or your own materials inside of Blender. You can see how it's currently the most popular add-on on the Blender market, so I thought it might be valuable to have some tutorials showing you how it works. Um, so you can learn more about it by visiting the cgessentials.com slash Smartify nodes. And so in this first video, we're just going to go through kind of setting it up and creating your first smart shader that you can use in order to mix materials together. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. Let's go ahead and let's jump over into Blender. So the first thing I recommend with this tool is I recommend creating your own workspace. So I'm just going to click over here, click on the plus button. We're going to add a layout workspace. So this is going to be our new workspace right here. And basically what we want is we want a window down here where we can edit our shaders. So we want the shader editor to be right here. And then up here, we want a pair of viewports, right? One is going to be a viewport where we can access our asset browser and all of the Smartify nodes. And then the other one is just going to be a 3D window that we can use in order to view our 3D space, right? So over here, we can have this like rendered out. And over here, we can see this in shaded mode. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but I found this way is a good way to do this. Now, one thing that you might do is you might change your um, preview size over here in the asset browser to tiny. And so um, just remember that when you do download this, this is an asset collection of different nodes. It's not an add-on, right? So when you go up and install it, you don't want to install it in the add-ins tab. You want to go into save or you want to go into file paths and you want to add the folder that comes along with this as an asset library. Note that I usually set this as a append in here, not append reuse data. But now what we can do is we can access these assets inside of our view. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move my default dog out of the way. So I'm going to move her back here and I'm going to use one of the assets that comes along with this, the shader ball. And so you can find that by going into the bonus section right here. And there's an option for options or objects. And what you can do is you can drag that in here. Notice how there's a building to play around with. There's a meshes option to play around with. But in this case, we want to bring the shader ball in. So I'm just going to drop shader ball right in the middle of my scene right here. We can do an R, Z, and rotate this negative 90 degrees so that it's facing the camera. So what I want to do is I want to start by just setting up a smart material. That's what we're going to talk about in this video. In future videos, we'll talk about like the vertex painting. We'll talk about some of the other tools that are contained in here. But for now, what I want to do is I want to add my own mixed material to this shader ball. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump in here and I'm just going to remove the material that's currently on there and I'm going to create a new material. And so there are some smart effects that are already in here, right? So like, for example, if I was to drag this principal BSDF over, and then I was to drag this mossy effect in here, notice how this is going to automatically kind of apply that shader to this surface, right? So you've got your principled BSDF material over here, and then you've got this shader over here. That's definitely valuable and you should definitely play around with some of these. Um, you can do some really cool things with them, but I want to show you how to create your own shader using the tools built into this particular add-on. And so the way that we're going to do this is you need to start by adding a shader node group. Right, And so if you look at this, you've got shaders in here, you've got smart effects, smart materials, you've got texture sets, which are textures, um, and then you've got custom stuff, which we're not going to worry about too much right now, and then you've got some bonus stuff. Well, in this case, we want to focus on the node groups, and so the node groups are really what make this powerful. And specifically in this case, notice how you've got different kinds of things in here, right? You've got the all Smartify nodes, which literally lets you drag every node that comes along with this into your viewport. You've got your smart shader node, which is what we're going to start with. You've got your masks, which are going to affect where mixing happens. You've got a mixer, which is basically designed to help you mix different materials together. You've got a pinned, you've got the append 
function which allows you to create um, a lot of different things like live animated materials and you've got smart utilities which are basically going to be tools that you can use in order to do different things with your materials but in this case we want to start by dragging a smart shader in here. Notice how there's two options in here. There's a light version and the full shader version. We're going to go ahead and drag that shader version in right here. And notice what that does is that gives you a shader that you can then set up with your um, material output. So in this case, right, I'm going to drag the shader into the surface and I'm going to drag the displacement into the displacement. Now, um, there are a couple things that we're going to talk about in a second that make this uh, set up a little bit easier. But for right now, notice how this is basically set up a very simple material. Now, if we come in here and adjust things like the color, notice how the material here is going to change. Now, usually what you're going to do with the smart shader, though, is you are going to take your texture sets and you're going to drag them into the smart shader. So in this case, right, say that we wanted this to be a stone uh, material. And so I'm just going to drag the stones 0, 1 in here. Now, one thing that you're going to find extremely valuable is make sure that you've gone into Edit Preferences under Add-ons, and you want to make sure that you've enabled Node Wrangler. Node Wrangler is going to add a number of different tools in here that are going to make our life a lot easier. So make sure that that's enabled. Well, then what you can do is you can hold down Alt, and you can right-click and drag and this is automatically going to hook in the material or the uh, the nodes into the proper slots right here. But notice what we've done is we've basically come in here and we've added a stone material to this object right here. So um, in its simplest form, this is how this works, right? You use the different nodes that are in here in order to set up materials. Now, note that when you come down here, right, you're able to adjust different things about the material, right? So you can set if it's metallic or non-metallic. Um, you can set if it's rough or not rough, which you're not really going to see unless we jump over into Eevee. You can adjust different contrast things about your materials, other things like that. But one of the things that you can't adjust from here is we want to make this material smaller, right? It's too big on our shader ball. And so in order to make these materials smaller, there's actually a node built in. I think it's under Smart Utilities. There's two options. There's an option for UV mapping, or you can use the one which I'm going to drag in, which is UV and box mapping, which is going to do kind of like an automatic mapping situation. But what I want to do is I want to drag from the mapping right here into the mapping on my stones option right here. And notice how when that gets set up, I can now come in here and I can adjust things about this material. Specifically, I can use these sliders in order to adjust how big and small materials are running through our node setup right here, right? And you can adjust if you're gonna use the UV or box mapping in here, right? So notice how with the UV, it's kind of like following along with this. If I drag this over into the box mapping, notice how this is more just kind of like applying it on the surface here like this. You can do that either way. It's kind of up to you. I'm going to go ahead and leave it with my world set to one and my UV set to zero for right now. But now what I want to do is I want to set this up where it mixes this material with another material. And so in order to do that, I need two things, right? I need another material and I need a way to mix them together. And so let's go ahead and set up our other material first. So we're going to kind of follow the same process here. I'm just going to add a smart shader node in here. I'm going to drag this in like this, and I'm going to drag a texture set for moss in here. Right, so we're basically setting up that moss shader that's already built in, but now you know how to do it. So I'm gonna drag the materials in for the moss, and then I'm just gonna hold Alt, right click and drag like this in order to set up the different inputs, right? And so one of the things about this is you currently can't see um, what this is doing, right? You can, because it's not hooked into our output node right here. This other one is. And so if you do want to temporarily see 
what a different node is going to do if it was plugged into our material output, what you can do is you can do a control shift click. When you do a control shift click, what that's going to do is that's going to hook this object up to your main shader instead of the other one allowing you to preview it. And then when you wanna go back, you can just do a control shift click right here and it's going to hook the nodes up right here. So if I do a control shift click right here, notice how this is what that mossy material looks like. So if I was to just plug this mossy material in here like this, this is going to be completely moss. Well, that's not 100% what we want. What we want is we want to mix them together. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this up a little bit just so you can see it a little bit better. Um, we'll drag this up a little bit as well. But what we need to do is we need to use a mixer in order to do this. And so what a mixer is, is it's a tool designed to basically mix your shaders together, right? It's gonna take two shaders and it's going to mix them together. So in this case, I'm gonna drag this shader mixer in here. And what I wanna do is I wanna plug the surface into shader one for object one, right? So I'm gonna drag my surface or my shader and my displacement into the first slot. We can go ahead and drag this overall shader into our material output. And so what I want to do is I want to take this other object, I want to do an alt right click and drag, and I want to click and drag this into this object. Well, what this mixer is going to do is it's going to mix the two shaders together. And so when this is done compiling, you can see what this is doing is this is basically like layering these on top of each other, right? So it's taking one shader and layering it on top of the other one. And if I was to drag the mask to the left, or the right, notice how you can see that it's moving back and forth between one material and the other material, right? So you can do fully moss or fully not just by dragging this to the left or the right. Well, that's not what we want. What we want is we want to use a mask that tells this where to put that material, right? And so to do that, what we wanna do is we wanna to go to the masks function. And notice how there's a number of different masks in here allowing you to set where materials are going to go, right? So there's the ambient occlusion, there's the edge mask, which is going to try to put this on the edges in your model. Um, there's the leaking, which is going to try to make this look like something is leaking. And there's also some location based. Well, in this case, we just want to take a facing mask and we want to drag that into our shader setup. So we're gonna drag in facing right here. And what we wanna do is we wanna take this mask and we wanna drag the ramp mask option into our mask right here. Well, what that's going to do is that's basically going to tell this, okay, apply this mask wherever this shader tells us to do this. Well, in this case, right, if we look at this, what this is doing is this is applying this to kind of like the top surfaces of our object. And then you can come in here and you can adjust things like the strength. So if I come in here and adjust the facing, for example, notice how if I adjust this down so that it's negative, it's going to flip this and this is going to apply it to the bottom. We don't necessarily want that. We want this to apply that facing to the top. And notice how depending on where you set this, this is going to look a little bit different, but we can use this to adjust where that moss is going to be. And so notice how you can adjust noise in here, right? So I can toggle this noise up a little bit. And what the noise is going to do is this is gonna make this a little more, um, instead of just like firmly defining this along the edges, you can set that this is noisy and you can adjust the scale of the noise in there as well. Notice how I can use this in order to make this more or less noisy in my scene fairly quickly. And note that there is some compiling of the shaders going on in the background when you make these changes. Sometimes this is super smooth on my computer and sometimes it isn't, and I haven't really figured out why, um, what drives that or anything like that. But we've basically come in here and we've created a mix material that we can use in order to simulate moss in our scene. All right, so I'm gonna jump us over into shaded mode real quick, but say you wanna drag another material in here, it's as easy as dragging the new material in and just hooking it up into that existing um, 
into that existing shader that's being mixed on here, right? So if I drag the snow in here like this, and I set this up, notice how when I jump back over into shaded mode with this all set up like this, Notice how this now has a snow material applied to it rather than a moss material. And so that's how you can create your first smart shader material inside of Smartify Nodes. All right, so that's where I'm in this video. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think about Smartify Nodes and about this format where I do a deep dive into the way different add-ons work. I just love having that conversation with you guys. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.